guys, Mr. Backer here. This is part one of lesson 4.2. We're still dealing with trig functions, but now we're using something called the unit circle. Just one objective for this video, we are going to evaluate trig functions using the unit circle. Now we've already sort of introduced the idea of what a unit circle is. It's a circle whose radius is one unit. But it's even more than that, especially when we talk about this trigonometry stuff. What we're gonna focus on is we're gonna take a look at a whole bunch of angles so like in this picture, there's a zero degree angle, or we could call that zero radians. We've got a 30 degree angle, which is pi over six, and there's a whole bunch more angles that are labeled on this picture. What we're gonna focus on is where the terminal side of that ray of an angle intersects our circle. And we're gonna look at those ordered pairs. So like if we were looking at this 30 degree or pi over six radian angle, we would be focusing on this point on our circle, which would give us the ordered pair root three over two comma a half. Or if we were looking at this five pi over six angle over here in the second quadrant, we'd be looking at the ordered pair negative root three over two comma one half. So we're gonna be using this unit circle a lot as we start evaluating and doing a little bit more with these trig functions. There are six trig functions that we're gonna be focusing on. You're probably most familiar with these ones that are in the left-hand column over here, the sine, cosine, and tangent. Remember, there are abbreviations that we can give to each one of those. So like for the sine, that's just S-I-N. For the cosine, that's C-O-S. And for the tangent, that's just tan. Well, we also have a few more trig functions that we're gonna work with here. One of them is called the cosecant. We abbreviate that C-S-C. For the secant, we abbreviate that one S-E-C and the cotangent is just C-O-T. So let's get some definitions as to what these different trig functions are gonna represent, especially when we're looking at the unit circle. So when we're focusing on some theta angle on our unit circle, remember I said we're gonna be looking at a bunch of ordered pairs, some X's and Y's. So if we're looking at like the sine of a specific angle, what we would look at is the Y value of whatever ordered pair happens at that intersection point. If we're doing the cosine, we're just gonna look at whatever the x value is from our ordered pair. Now tangent gets a little bit trickier because we're gonna use both of these things. We're gonna stack them up as a fraction. We'll take our y value divided by our x value. Now since this one is a fraction, we do have to qualify it a little bit. We need to make sure that x value on the bottom of the fraction isn't zero because remember we can never divide by zero. Now these other ones that you might not be as familiar with, these are called reciprocal functions. And basically what the reciprocal function means is we would just take the fraction and flip it over. So the cosecant is related to the sine. For the sine we had that y value and we could put that thing over one. Well in order to find the cosecant, we just flip that fraction over. So we make it one over y. And again, since we've got this fraction look to it, the y value on bottom can't be zero. Secant is related to the cosine uh, the same way. Those things are reciprocals. So we could take this x over one fraction and just flip it over to get our secant value. So it would be one over x. And again, x is on the bottom of the fraction, so it can't be zero. Cotangent is related to our tangent. Reciprocal, again, just means flip the fraction over. So this time the x value ends up on top. The y value ends up on bottom, so that y value can't be zero, otherwise we'd be dividing by zero and bad things would happen. Now there are some times where we're gonna end up with the zero on the bottom of the fraction, and that's what's gonna give us undefined values. If we look at the angles pi over two or three pi over two, you can check those out on your unit circles. The ordered pair at pi over two is zero, one, and the ordered pair at three pi over two is zero, negative one. So if we looked at setting up a tangent or a secant fraction, for tangent, we go y over x. So that one, for either one of these, we'd end up with zero on the bottom of the fraction. Same thing is happening with the secant. This one would be like one over x as we just looked at it on the last page. Again, for both of these, our x value is zero and we can't divide by zero. So that's what gives us an undefined value. Similar things are happening if we look at uh, cotangent and cosecant of the angles zero and pi. At zero, the ordered pair is one zero, and at pi, it's negative one zero. Well, both of these fractions would be set up using that y value on the bottom. And for both of these cases, we've got a y value of zero. 
So the whole reason we're ending up with these undefined values is when we set up those fractions, we end up dividing by zero, and we know that's not allowed. So looking at this first example, we're gonna take a look at the angle pi over six on our unit circle. So if you find that thing real quick, we'll see that the ordered pair there is root three over two comma one half. So if we look at setting up these six different trig functions, so if we look at the sine of our angle pi over six, well, earlier we said the sine was gonna be the y value from the ordered pair. So here we've got a y value of a half. So the sine of pi over six is just a half. For the cosine, we said that one was gonna be the x value. So it's gonna be root three over two. Tangent might get a little bit trickier since we have to set up a fraction. Doing the tangent of pi over six, we said tangent was y over x. So if we go one half over root three over two. Now we've got fractions inside of fractions on here and that's looking kind of messy to me. So what I wanna do is simplify this down by multiplying the top and bottom of our fraction by two. So if we take a half times two, that's just one. If we take root three over two times two, those twos will cancel out and we'll get root three. So we've got one over root three but we're not allowed to leave radicals on the bottom of the fraction. So we're gonna rationalize this thing by multiplying top and bottom by the square root of three. Now on bottom, if we take the square root of three times the square root of three, we just get three. On top, taking one times the number, we're just gonna get that root three back. So the tangent of pi over six is the square root of three over three, once we simplify everything down. Now let's start taking a look at those reciprocal functions. The one that's related to the sine is the cosecant. So if we do the cosecant of pi over six, well remember, reciprocal just means we're flipping the fraction over. For the sine, we had a half. For the cosecant, if we flip that one half fraction over, we get two over one, and that reduces down to just two. If we look at the secant, well that's the one that's related to the cosine. If we flip the cosine fraction over, we'll get two over the square root of three. But again, we're gonna have to rationalize this thing. So multiply top and bottom by the square root of three. On top, we get two times root three. On bottom, root three times root three is just three. Now doing the cotangent, I'm actually gonna backtrack a little bit and focus on where we had one over the square root of three for the tangent, because if we flip that fraction over, we just get root three over one, and that just reduces down to the square root of three. Next angle we're gonna take a look at is pi over two. The ordered pair there is zero, one. So if we look at setting up these six trig functions, well the sine, remember, is the y value, so that's just gonna be one. Our cosine is the x value, so that one's zero. For the tangent, if we looked at setting up this fraction, it's y over x, so it's one over zero. Well, remember, we can't divide by zero, so this one is an undefined value. If we look at doing those reciprocal functions, cosecant is related to the sine. Well, here our fraction is really just one over one, so if we flip that fraction over, it's still one over one, so the cosecant is one. If we look at the secant, which remember is related to the cosine, here our fraction would be like zero over one, and if we flipped that thing over, we'd get one over zero, but again, zero on the bottom of the fraction can't happen, so this one is undefined. For our cotangent, well, over here we had the fraction one over zero. If we do the reciprocal of that, it ends up being zero over one, and zero divided by one is just zero. For the angle pi, that ordered pair is negative one, zero. So again, I'm just gonna look at setting up those six trig functions. Again, the sine is the y value, so in this case, the sine is zero. For the cosine, that's our x value, so we've got negative one. And for the tangent, we go y over x, so this would be zero over negative one, and zero divided by negative one is just zero. For the cosecant, we have to do the reciprocal of zero. Well, that's like zero over one. Flip that over, we get one over zero, which is undefined. If we look at the secant of pi, well, our fraction here is negative one over one. Flip that over, we still get negative one as our answer. 
And for our cotangent of pi, well, here we've got 0 over negative 1 as our fraction. Flip that over, we get negative 1 over 0, which is another undefined value. Now this last one might be a little bit trickier because we're dealing with a negative angle. We're looking at the angle negative pi over 3. Well, let's revisit our unit circle real quick. Now, positive angles go in the counterclockwise direction. So if we were looking at the angle pi over 3, we'd be looking at like this 60 degree angle up here. But since it's a negative angle, we're actually going to be going down 60 degrees or down pi over 3. So that's going to land us down here at this angle 5 pi over 3. If we think about some vocab words that we've talked about before, 5 pi over 3 and negative pi over 3 are coterminal angles. So we're going to look at this ordered pair right here, 1 half comma negative root 3 over 2. So I've got that ordered pair written out, 1 half comma negative root 3 over 2, and I'm just going to start evaluating the trig functions again. So if we do the sine of negative pi over 3, sine is still the y value, so it's negative root 3 over 2. If we do the cosine of our angle, cosine is still the x value, so it's a half. Tangent is going to be a little bit trickier because, again, we have to set up the fraction. So we've got our y value, which is negative root 3 over 2, divided by our x value, which is a half. Now again, I see fractions inside of fractions, so I'm going to multiply both of these things by 2. On top, the divided by 2 and the multiplying by 2 cancels out, so we get negative root 3. On bottom, a half times 2 is just 1, so this is negative root 3. I'm going to slide these things out of the way so I've got a little more room to work. If we start looking at those reciprocal functions, so the cosecant of this negative pi over 3, we're going to take this negative root 3 over 2 fraction and flip it over. So 2 over negative root 3. We are going to have to rationalize this thing, so multiply top and bottom by root 3. On top we get 2 root 3. On bottom, negative root 3 times root 3 is negative 3. If we do the secant of our angle negative pi over 3, we've got this 1 half fraction. Flip that over, we get 2 over 1, which is just 2. For our cotangent, I'm going to look at this fraction where we've got negative root 3 over 1. Flipping that over, we get 1 over negative root 3. And again, we're going to have to rationalize that thing by multiplying top and bottom by root 3. So on the top, 1 times root 3 is just the square root of 3. On bottom, negative root 3 times root 3 is negative 3. So we get negative root 3 over negative 3 as our final answer. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.